Well, it seems like the crazy person Kool-Aid is highly infectious because, as you can see here from the title of this IGN article, there's apparently a supposed Tolkien professor who says that Lord of the Rings canon doesn't exist, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that being the fact that the canon of Lord of the Rings exists. Let's go ahead and get into the article, shall we? Now that Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Season 2 has wrapped up, fans finally know the identity of the stranger. No one's surprised to find out who it was, by the way. Fans are now debating whether the character's inclusion in the show marks a significant break from the canon established by Lord of the Rings author J.R.R. Tolkien. It does. It just does. Perhaps surprising no one, the stranger is confirmed to be Gandalf the Lord of the Rings' most famous wizard. But how is it that Gandalf is roaming Middle-earth during the Second Age, the period in which the Rings of Power is set, when according to the Lord of the Rings itself, Gandalf and the other wizards only arrived on Middle-earth as part of their anti-Sauron support mission during the Third Age? Here's where it gets stupid, okay? There's no such thing, really, as canon in Tolkien. In a lore-focused interview released by Prime Video, okay, so already we don't have a good arbiter here of truth, Dr. Corey Olson dubbed the Tolkien Professor, there's definitely more than just them, that guy, offers his thoughts on this most vociferous debate. According to Dr. Olson, there is no Tolkien canon, and that's because Tolkien himself was always rethinking his world-building, even after his books were published. Hmm. Okay, I'll get into that in just a little bit, but let's hear what he says. First thing to specify is that there's no such thing, really, as canon in Tolkien, Dr. Olson insisted. Tolkien's ideas were ever-evolving. Dr. Olson went on to say that Tolkien considered tweaking the Middle-Earth timeline after the fact, playing around with the idea that Gandalf and his fellow Istari arrived during the Second Age and thus took part in the Wars of the Rings of Power. It's this suggestion, then, that the showrunners are leaning on when it comes to Gandalf's appearance here. If Tolkien had considered popping his premier wizard into the Second Age, perhaps it's perfectly fine to imagine a Middle-Earth history with that consideration realized. In the text of Lord of the Rings, we are told that Gandalf and the other wizards arrived at the year 1000 of the Third Age. And in his later years, he was playing around with the idea of maybe Gandalf coming sooner. Maybe some of the wizards coming in the Second Age and taking part in the Wars of the Rings of Power. Here's the problem with that, Mr quote-unquote Tolkien professor, is that the lore that has been established for decades now has been established in the stories that have been published. Tolkien, yes, may have been rethinking things, but if he did not put pen to paper and officially change it himself, then the lore that remains is the lore that is true. I understand the urge as an author to go back and rewrite things, even if I think it's great and perfect when I first write it. I go back and I say, okay, that's different. I need to change that. That's probably one of the main things that authors struggle with all the time, is trying to make their stories better and a little bit more perfected in terms of how we think things should go. But that doesn't mean that if we die and the original works are published, that those original works, which have the original lore, could be then changed based off of my suggestive thought that perhaps it could be changed. Because if I didn't change it as the writer of the story, then you don't get the right to change it as someone adapting the story. Now, here's the thing. Everybody loves the Lord of the Rings movies. The Peter Jackson trilogy. But the reason why isn't because that they are perfect adaptations of the books by no means. They left out the, the ending with the, I think it's called the, I forget the word I'm looking for. The Scouring of the Shire or whatever it was. I forget the word exactly. You, they leave out that because it's not a great way to end a movie right? They leave out Tom Bombadil because it's kind of too much of a diversion from the initial story because a lot of the Fellowship of the Ring in the book was a 
story of the hobbits going on several little adventures to get to their final destination. In which case, they got their actual mission and they started heading out. There's a lot that goes into this stuff, right? The movies didn't perfectly capture every single moment in the books. But that doesn't mean that the movies aren't in the spirit of Tolkien. Regarding exactly the message that Tolkien was writing in his books. That he was perfecting in his written book about Lord of the Rings. That right there is the key difference because in Rings of Power it is not a show that tries to adapt Tolkienian mythology it is not a show that tries to capture the spirit of Tolkien what it is is a show of people taking Tolkien named characters injecting their own thoughts ideas and concepts into the storyline they themselves have crafted, making up characters on the fly, changing the lore, changing the history, changing the location of where characters come from, and completely and totally disregarding everything the good professor wrote. Their worldview in and of itself is inconsistent with Tolkien's writings and therefore incapable of actually capturing the spirit of it. So, Tolkien may have been playing around with changing a few things here and there, but that doesn't mean he did. And what has been written and is still on paper in the books is the ultimate source from which you should gather the information that you can to write a movie, TV show, or any other project. And any serious deviation that does not rely on capturing the spirit of Tolkien, like this show, is an abomination to his writings. I hope that cleared it up for you guys. Also, before I go, I do live in Florida. We're expecting this massive hurricane to come sometime tonight. So, if I don't wind up posting something for however long... You'll know why. I mean, I haven't posted for a couple of days anyways, but I was doing a lot of preparation and I finally got some time to record a video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you have a great day and I hope you have a great rest of the week.